In this video, we'll be going over 10 weird things that naturalists do so that you can see if you're a weird naturalist too. Coming right up. Hello and welcome to Eco Elsa. If you're new to my videos, my name is Elsa and I make videos to help you get outdoors. In this week's video, we'll be going over 10 weird things naturalists do and why. This is because I'm a naturalist and I realize that there's a lot of weird things that I and other naturalists do that the general public doesn't quite understand. So we're going to be going over some of these weird things so that if you're a weird naturalist, you can see that there's a whole community of weirdos just like you. And we're cheering you and your weirdness on, you weirdo. Or so that you can have a better understanding of why naturalists do some of these weird things. That there's a point to them, I promise. So let's get started. Number one. We obsess over scat. We stare at scat, we poke it with a stick, we break it apart, we lick it, we sing songs about scat. It starts with an S and it ends with a T. It comes out of you and it comes out of me. Some call it this, some call it that, but let's be scientific and call it scat. What do you think I was gonna say, you naughties? Shame on you. Shame on you, we would not swear in a children's song. And we eat scat. I mean, we pretend to eat scat. This is because scat is super interesting if you're a naturalist. You can learn a lot about the animal that left the scat behind. You also can teach kids a lot of cool things by looking at scat. So that's why a lot of naturalists kind of get borderline obsessed with scat. Plus, it makes for really fun, silly songs and teachable moments for students that they will always remember, like pretending to eat the scat and freaking them out. Number two, teasing and freaking out children. Messing with children is an art form. It takes careful planning so that you can get it just right so that they are freaked out and in giggles and the moment is going to be so memorable, it scars their brain in a good way. What we're talking about is pretending to eat scat for a teachable moment for students so they understand not to put random things in their mouth. Because you would be surprised how old some students have been when I've been out in the woods and I have to remind them, do not put acorns and sticks in your mouth. You are not a preschooler. You think I'm joking. I'm not. Look kids, I found some scat. Now to figure out what it is, we need to look at it, touch it, smell it, and eat it. Mmm, isn't that good? Reminder, just kidding. Do not actually eat real scat. These are chocolate covered peanuts, a wonderful item that you can use to trick children into thinking you're actually eating scat. But you're not actually. Don't do it. And make sure the kids know by the end of the hike that you didn't actually eat scat and that they should never eat scat. Or put random things in their mouth if they don't know what it is or where it's been, okay? The reason why we're joking and teasing kids when we're outdoors is we're using humor as a teaching tool to help make certain lessons more memorable. I like following the rules and not eating random things when you're out in the woods. You know, little things like that just so the students really get it ingrained in their memory and it's a memory that they share with everyone for the rest of their life so they keep on remembering that rule. A big important thing about this one is you never want to take teasing too far. Usually you want to make yourself the butt of all of the jokes. That way none of the students are feeling hurt or feeling bullied by your antics. It's just a big teasing and joking but it's all on you and they get to laugh at you with you. Number three, licking and smelling random things. We naturalists are known to smell and lick quite a few random things. Rocks, leaves, flowers, berries, whatever the case may be, please keep in mind that this naturalist has spent time learning about these different things and so they usually have a pretty good understanding of what not to lick and what not to smell. That doesn't mean you have the same training, so you should not go out into the woods and randomly lick and smell things. It's not going to go well, not as well as you think it might go. Now the reason why naturalists are doing this is because they're using their sense of smell and taste to properly identify something. For specific plants and rocks even, it comes down to looking at how it tastes or how it smells because there's a certain key factor, maybe it tastes a little bit more salty or a little bit more sweet, and that's how you can do the final identification between this or that. So just keep that in mind, it's something that they're using to confirm an identification of something, usually. They also might just be a rando who likes to lick rocks out in the woods or leaves. You never know. 
Leave it to the professionals, okay? Number four, hugging trees. So naturalists have been known to go about randomly hugging trees occasionally on hikes, sometimes specifically for a certain class. Now the reason why naturalists will hug trees is because the tree needs a hug. Nope, just kidding. Uh, it's to help kids learn about compassion for the environment in some cases. It also is a fun activity we do sometimes called Find the Perfect Fit, where you keep hugging trees until you can find a tree that perfectly fits around your arms. Ah, perfect hug tree. So that's kind of the reason why we're doing that. It, the big thing is teaching compassion though for the environment, and it kind of is a fun and goofy little game that you can get a lot of kids in on doing, no matter their age sometimes. Nope. Nope, doesn't quite reach. Not a perfect fit. Yay, it's a perfect fit. My tree, my tree. Number five, must name everything. Listen, naturalists are a special group of people. If we know what the name to something is, we're going to tell you what the name to it is. Plus anything that else that we know about it, what it's used for, how to identify it, where do you find it, where does it live, what does it eat, etc. Everything. We'll tell you everything we know about it plus its name. When I went on my very first date with my fiance, a hike, I had a really hard time resisting the urge to tell him about all the different plants around us and what they could be used for. And unfortunately to this day, he still doesn't let me live it down that I told him all about plants that could make him throw up or give him diarrhea on our first date together. <sighs> Isn't that cute? Isn't that love? I'm surprised he puts up with me. Please understand from this story, it is really, really hard. Even when you're hiking with a guy you like, you still, still cannot resist the urge to tell people everything you know about this plant. Oh look, goldenrod. Oh look, Virginia creeper, the pink leaves. Boo, invasive honeysuckle. Number six, making animal noises. Naturals have been known to run through the woods making random animal noises. There's a few reasons why we could be doing this. One, we're trying to teach children about different animal calls and they're trying to attract an animal to us. Two, we could just be demonstrating a noise that an animal makes if it was around us. And number three, we just like to be weirdos sometimes and randomly run through the woods making animal calls, trying to attract other naturalists to us with our similar annoying animal noises. Or try to outdo and outcompete another naturalist for weird noises. We're a fun bunch. You should see what happens when you get like 50 of us in a room together. It goes nuts. I'm telling you, it's lit when you have that many naturalists running around together. Number seven, playing games made for children. The big reason why naturalists do this is because an easy way of getting kids into the game is by showing them how into the game you are and how much fun you're having, which can sometimes get a few of the ones hanging back more into it and enjoying their time. What's also nice about this is it's a great way to keep in shape. That's why all of us naturalists, we just, we look so good. We're so in shape from playing all these games with children. You should try it sometimes. Number eight, catching critters. Many naturalists have a hard time resisting the urge to catch and hold little critters to show to kids. There's a few different reasons for this. One, it's cute and I kind of want to hold it, sorry. Two, the other bigger thing though, is that by holding it, we can actually show kids a lot of cool things about that animal and maybe some other things like, hey, why you shouldn't be afraid of it? Look how nicely this little snake is sitting in my hands. It's not mean, it's not trying to bite me. See, it's a good snake. That's why we don't stomp on them, okay? So it's a great teachable moment and a great teaching tool being able to hold an animal gently and carefully so that kids can get a closer look at it and learn a lot of things about it and the environment and not being afraid of it. Even if it is just a teeny tiny level spider. And also sometimes we would like to pick it up because we need to get it to somewhere safer because it's in the road or it's a really hot dry day and we want to get the little froggy to some water. So there's a frog right here and I'm going to just stop what I'm doing and catch him. Froggy, 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 froggy. You are so pretty. What a pretty frog. Rocky. Rocky. Okay, little buddy, let's get you to some water. Number nine, being curious and having to investigate everything. 
Naturalists are just big scientists and kids at heart. We're very curious, we're very interested in learning about everything. If it's something that we don't know, we gotta look at it and find out more about it. That's why it's so much fun when you're in a group with a bunch of naturalists because you always learn something new. So keep that in mind. This need to share and to learn is what makes a naturalist a naturalist, if I do say so myself. We are the teachers of the woods. Pretty much that's literally what we are. And so by having this need to learn everything, we then have the need to share everything we learn. And it's a give and take and we give back tenfold what we learn. So trust me, if all the things on the list, this is the only one that you do, there is hope for you yet. You could still be a weird naturalist if you just tried a little harder. And lastly, number 10, making learning fun. So it's not enough to just feel the need to learn and to teach everything. Naturalists really, really want to try and make that learning experience for everyone around us as fun as possible. This is why naturalists allow kids to play games, to explore, to climb on things, to crawl, to investigate, to get down really close and look at stuff, to build things. Naturalists just at heart want you to have fun learning and experiencing as much about nature as possible. And that can kind of make us weird to some teachers, but in my case, I think that's pretty amazing that any kind of teacher that really wants people to learn tries and does all these different things, you know, obviously their heart is in a good place and they're trying their best. So they may be a little weird, but it's a good thing because it's helping all different kinds of learning styles manage to learn and experience the world around them. So there you have it, the 10 different ways that make naturalists weird, at least to other people, but not to our fellow naturalists. Your weirdness is always welcome with us if you do any of these things on the list, except for eating scat. Please, please don't eat scat. We, we went over this, it's a joke. We do not eat scat. Don't eat it. No eating the scat. So unfortunately, that is all we have time for for today. Thanks for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe below, and make sure to ring that little bell. That way you can be notified the second our videos are up on YouTube to help give you more valuable content for getting outdoors. If you're still looking for more resources, make sure to check out the description below for links to ton more resources, things that were mentioned in this video, as well as a link to our website, ecoelsa.com, where you can find tons more resources and if you live in Minnesota you can sign up for a nature tour or an outdoor class if you're interested to learn more and go on a hike with a naturalist and learn all these wonderful things that we went over today. So as always I hope you have a fantastic week. You be safe, learn lots, have fun, and get outdoors. We'll see you out there. That's right, sign up for a nature tour so that way you can see a naturalist in action and all the weird things that we do. Come on, what you waiting for? You know you want to.